Hello and welcome to your next tutorial in C++. And today we're going to be discussing arrays as parameters and if we have time, multi-dimensional arrays. Uh-oh. Arrays as parameters, function declarations and function definition. Yep. Remember, this is going to be a college course here. I'm going to that's that's uh, how I want you to learn. I want you to walk away from here like a professional programmer. Well, way down the line, of course, not now, but you know, way down the line you'll be professional. Uh, so I really want to build upon things for you. So, you know, in this tutorial, we're going to have arrays, functions, loops. You know, we're really going to put everything together. So, but anyways, let's say that you're a teacher and you want to create an array that collects all the scores for all their students for one test. So, first of all, we're going to need a, uh, a capacity for that array. So, that's about const int and capacity. And I said that equal to... Uh, in California, I think it's maybe roughly, I think it depends on the school district, but I think it's about 39 students, it's some weird number. That's the max number of students that a teacher can have in a class outside of extracurriculars like PE or band. Uh, other than those classes, like regular math, science, English, I don't think they can have more than this, but I don't know, it's, I don't know, it's something weird. But anyway, so let's create our array now. So int scores, and we'll throw capacity in there. So it can only have as many students as that they're technically allowed. Uh, okay, so then we're going to also need to create num of elements because, like we did in the last tutorial, we're going to be creating a loop that will determine how many students the teacher actually typed in. So int num of elements, and we have to initialize that as zero. That's very important. So now, now let's actually create our first function, which is to fill out the array. So the first one will be called void fill array, and there's two pieces of information we'll need. We'll need the array and the number of elements, which will increment as we're going through the loop, as we're you know filling in the array. If you watched my last tutorial, this will make perfect sense to you. If you haven't and you don't understand what I'm talking about, please watch the last tutorial because uh, yeah, I, I don't want to start at ground zero again because I really want to get more advanced. So in order to pass in an array, just type out the data type with brackets after that. That's all, pretty easy. Then, we're going to need our number of elements as well. But, since we're going to be changing it, modifying the value, we're going to need to pass it by reference, not by value, because if you pass by value, it's a copied, and this guy won't know the changes that are made to it. So, it's in, that's important. So then, we're going to need our comments. So, fill array, I'll throw it at param, ints, um, scores of students and you know just a little description for each thing whoops and whoops number of students number of elements you can call it whatever you'd like oh I put an A there there we go so that's about all I wanted so let's actually fill our array down here so I call it void fill array and now I'm gonna get to something that's very important uh, first of all, let's actually figure out how to type this out. So it's actually a little bit different. This time, you're not going to put the brackets after the data type, otherwise you'll get an error. Instead, you need to put it after whatever you're going to call it. So we called it scores here, but in here, let's call it new scores. Then goes the brackets, so remember that. Then our number of elements. I'll just call it the same thing for continuity's sake. Okay, so I want to point out that when you're passing a an array into a, as a parameter, you might have realized, well, if we're going to be changing the values inside the array and inside this function, don't we have to pass it by reference as well, just like the num number of elements? No, because the arrays are automatically passed by reference. You cannot pass these guys by value. So that's very important to remember. These are always passed by reference, and it's always possible to change them permanently inside a function, and that's going to come into play later. Okay, so we're going to have to create an int i is equal to zero. We have to create an int uh, score, or should I call it? I'll just call it score. Uh, just like that. And I'll just leave it as that. And I have a C out message that pops up that says type in scores of students. And my trusty negative one to stop. So this is something very common that you'll end up doing. Then I think that's everything I need. I'm not sure. 
So while, so while, oh yeah, the CN. So CN score. I knew I was missing something. Of course, then again, I have to actually spell it right. Sorry about that. So while score is not equal to negative one, notice how unlike the last tutorial, I'm not making it a string because we're working with integers, not strings this time. So while the score is not equal to negative one, and, whoops, and i is less than capacity, uh, we can put in our information. So first of all, let's if, if all this works, the first thing we want to do is increment our num of elements. So I'll type out num of elements plus plus. And this is why you have to set num of elements up here equal to zero to begin with, because we're not going to be initializing it down here. So it, you need to initialize it up here for sure. So, okay, so we have that done. Then we'll, and again, if everything worked, we'll have new scores at i. So the first time around, it will be index zero, so because i is zero to begin with. And we'll set that equal to whatever we typed in, which is obviously not negative one. And what else do we need in here? We'll need a, I know we're going to need a i plus plus. And we'll need another c in for score. And the reason why I do this is because as we're typing this out uh, right next to this message, when it goes C in score, it only reads the first one. Then it as it goes, through the, goes through the loop, once it hits C in again, it will check for the second one that you typed in. So we're, you know, we can just type them all in, in a row, and it will take care of the rest for us. You, you will have seen that in action in my last tutorial. Number 15, I think it was. Okay, so that's all this guy is doing, and I think that should be it. So I click save, and now let's create our function to actually print it. So we'll go down here, and we'll go print array. And again, we need an int this, and then int. But since we're not going to be changing our number of elements, we're not going to pass it by reference. We'll just pass it by value. However, remember before when I said arrays are always passed by reference automatically, thus meaning their values can end up being changed by who knows it could be some you know hacker trying to you know mess with your application or something trying to tamper with it and mess it up so if you plan to put your pass an array into a function that's not gonna that's not meant to change it like fill array is gonna change it it's gonna put elements in there but print isn't it's very uh, safe to make sure you put a constant in front of it so notice how we put a constant you know up here it's you use the const modifier anytime that you're going to be passing in an array or a vector. We'll learn about vector. There's plenty of other times to use them, but for arrays, if you're not going to be changing the values in them. So we're just going to be printing it, not changing it. So this one's called print array. Excuse me. At param const int uh, scores of students and at param int number of students. There we go. And let's uh, put it down here now. So it's, what was it called? Void prints, uh, print array. And then, then we'll have to throw our const here as well. Const ints new scores. And then ints num of elements. There we go. And there we go. So now everything works. So now let's actually print this out. So I'm going to have a C out that comes out first that will say, whoops, uh, scores, colon. And then we'll use our trusty for loop to print it out. And you'll see why we had to pass in the number of elements as well. So first we'll have for int i is equal to 0. i is less than, yep, number of elements. Remember, you don't want to use capacity here because you want to make sure that it's only for as many as we put in then i plus plus so then we'll have a c out the score itself so it will be new scores at i and then an empty string so i'm not going to put an end line here because i want them to print horizontally all the way across and i think that should be it so let's print this in so first of all we have to call them so let's go fill array because i have to show you how you pass them in as parameters in here as well and then print array now up here, all you do is put the name. You don't have to put any brackets. So for this, just type out scores and then num of elements. Remember how with the passing by reference, I said you don't put the ampersand right there? 
it's the same thing with arrays. You don't put the you don't put the brackets there, otherwise you'll get an error. And then here, talk about scores and then num of elements again. So let's uh, work this out. So I have my code right here. I'll save it and let's run it. See how this works. I think I'll do multi-dimensional arrays. I don't know. Should I make this a long video? I really do. Type in scores of students. So let's say one person got a 75, and I'll hit my space bar. Then the next got an 85, someone got a 95, a 90, uh, an 88. And then I'll type in my negative one to finish. I'll click enter, and there I go. So basically what happened is we went to our fill and array, we passed in our, or excuse me, function, and we passed in our array and number of elements. And then we went into this while loop. So uh, while score is not equal to negative one, and it's less than the capacity, uh, increment our number of elements up by one, and it will be permanent because we pass it by reference, and set at i, so it keeps incrementing up by one each time, equal to whatever we typed in. So it's going to go through each of our scores. And it goes through each of these scores because we put the c in here as well. And the reason why we put the first c in outside is just in case we put negative one there to begin with. If this is negative one to begin with, it will never even go inside the while loop. Then when it was done, it went into our print array. It printed scores right here. And then it just went in here, while i is less than the number of elements, which we caught because we passed this one by reference, so we know the value. So while it's less than that, just print our new scores with a space in between, and it printed all our scores. So that's really, really nice. 